Yeah. Hey. 
Church, it's good to see you once more. And uh, today I know that it's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to my wife and Bongi Obama and all mothers who are watching us. We really appreciate you guys. We appreciate everything you do for our families and for our children. Uh, we really, as husbands, can't do without you. Even your children will uh, witness to that. We cannot do without you. We really appreciate you. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to Rak uh, fathers and Nabandu and Uba. Please uh, make this day one of the greatest day for your mother and for your wives. Uh, appreciate them. We need them more than they need us. Uh, we really thank God for them. And welcome, Bazalani, once more uh, to this day. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We always rejoice on this day because this is a day. Uh, Jesus Christ resurrected and this is a day that we always overcome all the time. So we are the people who are more than conquerors. Let's not forget that, that we overcome whatever comes our way, we overcome. Today my topic is uh, the better days are still ahead. I want you to remember that better days are still ahead. Just remember that it doesn't matter what is going on in your life, it doesn't matter and uh, what we are going through, know that the better days, our God has promised that he will give us better future. And he still promised the better future. We will have the better future. I want us to look at that, that our God will never fail us and he has never failed us. Uh, our future as a children of God, let's remember it's in his hands. And Utiko is a promise keeper. He keeps the promises. He kept the promises to the Israel. He kept the promise to David. Whatever promise he has given you, he will keep. You just need to believe him. Don't give up. Look unto him. Remember we read last week from the book of Hebrews where uh, it says that uh, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. We're looking unto him. We're not uh, distracted by the things that are happening, but we'll look unto him because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. So the better days are ahead of us. They are not behind us. They are not behind. Refuse to believe that the better days are behind you. No matter what people are telling you, no matter what you are hearing, no matter what you are seeing, 
believe that the penalties in Sugu SZ, they are not behind us. I want us to look uh, at the women who never gave up, at the women that I love from the Bible, this, this scripture I love so much about the woman who never gave up, irrespective of what she was going through. She believed and believed. She knew that one day she's going to be free. I want to talk to those people who've been going through uh, bad things, going through difficult times for many years, that don't give up. Better days are still ahead of you. Uye Sogakli Belanga, he will not forget about you. He will always come and rescue you. He is our rescue. Remember, Ujob, when he went through difficult time, he trusted God. He said, I know whom I have believed, and my Redeemer lives. So, Uchiko came through for Job. I know she, he went through that for many, many uh, years, but Uchiko eventually came through. We know that eventually Uchiko will come through for us. So, Uchiko, he is a promise keeper. I want to repeat that Utiko Wetu is not the one who forgets about the promises. He is the promise keeper and he is the God of many chances. I know that you might be in trouble because of your doing, but Utiko Wetu, he is a God who gives you that chance. He gives you that chance. He did it to David and he will do it to you. He will give you many chances. So I want us, as we're talking about uh, better days that are still ahead of us, to look at the woman who never gave up, who believed that her future was still ahead, who believed that, that uh, she's not going to die the way she was. She knew that her life will change. And the Bible tells us that she tried everything. There are people who give up who have never tried anything. She tried everything, everything possible to make sure that she's got the better future. We ought to do that as a children of God. We Let's try everything. Let's do our best so that we, we brighten our future. We see our future brighter. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 8, reading from verse 43. The woman who had the blood issue, this is the woman we're talking about. She had the blood issue for 12 years. Just think about it. 12 years, blood issue all the time. And uh, if you look at the traditions and uh, the way the Israelites were uh, doing things those days, if you were having those uh, blood issues, you were considered as unclean. So that means you were isolated. You, you suffered social isolation. She suffered social isolation. She could not see the family. She could not see her friends. She was not acceptable in the community. But you know what? She did not give up. She did not give up about the future. She did not give up about uh, her being healed. If we read here, it says that now a woman having a blood, a, a flow of blood for 12 years, for 12 years, who spent all her life load on physicians and could not be healed. She spent everything trying to brighten her future, trying to get healed. She did not give up. You might be going through some uh, terrible time as a child of God, but do not give up because Utiko is waiting on you. Remember last week we read from uh, the book of Colossians chapter 6, uh, it was verse 11. It says that if we continue to do good, you know, if you continue to uh, seek God, you continue to pray, you continue to do good, even if you perhaps uh, building a business, maybe building a career, but you have ups and downs, don't give up. Continue to do the good. We continue to do the good. If you're seeking healing, if you're trusting God for the healing, this is good. Continue to do that good because the Bible tells us that if you continue to do good, you will reap at a proper time. Uchiko on a proper time for everything. Masi, can we say, but Uchiko, Uswana Sugunda will write at the right time. Let's be in that right place so that at the proper time, Uchiko will reward us. God is a rewarder. He is a promise keeper. He will keep his promise all the time. Now, this woman, she had the blood issue for 12 years. She never gave up. On her healing she spent every money everything spend all the energy you have spend everything do everything that you got to do in order to receive that promise of God so this woman she was stigmatized she was social isolated as we see here separated from the family separated from everybody but she never gave up think about it 
Maybe you're still living with your family. You still have at least some people to speak to. You are not separated. People don't look at you perhaps and, 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 and see you as unclean person. This woman, she had a terrible time for 12 years, but she kept trusting God. She, I believe that uh, she will wake up every day and look for where the help comes from. If people are telling her there is a help there, she will go and find that help. If people are telling her there's someone who can help you there, she will go. She was so relentless in seeking the healing that she wanted. She did not give up. So we as the children of God, we got to learn from her to be relentless, to be persuasive, try everything that we got to try so that we can receive what God has promised us. If we're talking about the healing, let me look at the healing. God promised us healing, all of us. Jesus died and he was beaten for our healing. The Bible tells us that by his stripes we are healed. He was bruised for our iniquities. It's our right. I know that sometimes people think that if uh, you have the right, uh, it's just going to come without demanding, without trying. But we know for sure now that you demand your right, that you go for the things that you're supposed to have. You demand them. So this woman did not give up on the hope of getting healed. She did not give up on the hope of being integrated into the community, of uh, going back and running the business if she was running the business, going back and working well, if she was working. She never gave up on that hope. She said, it's going to happen. I am not going to die isolated. I'm not going to die having this blood issue. It's going to go. you got to tell yourself as a child of God, whatever you're going through, it's going to go. It has to go. Don't accept. A problem sometimes you accept things. We cannot accept is Chitonga's promise. If you have some uh, sickness in your body, if you're struggling financially, God did not promise a struggle. He said struggle will be for a moment. He promised that that will prosper. He did not say we're going to suffer the illnesses all our lives, but he said that we are going to get healed. We demand that we try everything possible. But we know that our God is faithful. We do not give up on him. This woman did not give up on God. If we continue and read uh, verse 43, the same scripture, verse 43. Remember I was saying that if we read uh, the second part of verse 43, the second part, it says that she spent all the money she had. That means, think about it, uh, you spend the money and you do not get the value for your money. She spent all the money from the doctors, from the people who promised to help her, but there was no value whatsoever. You are not the very first person to have lost your money and did not get the value. You have lost your time. There are some people perhaps who are saying, you know, Pastor, I've lost money. I've lost time. I've tried everything. You know the first person, she lost money. Did not receive value for that money. She lost time. Twelve years is a lot of time. Twelve years. Did not receive no healing. Twelve years. She paid. But you know what? She told herself, you know what? I'm going to continue. I will not let this issue stop my life. Because if we look at the scripture, it says, I mean, we look at the history of the Jews. You were isolated. That means this woman was not integrated in the, into the community. So she was not, she did not have a social life at all. No social life whatsoever. She had to be somewhere separated, quarantined. We know, uh, uh, as, we talk, as, as we have the coronavirus now, that people who are infected, they are quarantined for 14 days, at least it's 14 days in their case. This woman was quarantined for 12 years, did not give up and told herself, you know what, I'm going to get out of this quarantine. I'm going to make something out of my life. I'm going to go out there and begin to live the life. Yes, Uti, if we read from the book of John chapter 10, 10, he says, I have come that they may have love. Uchiko, Uchumile, Uyesu, Guze, Uyesu, Aziz, Menobum. Even if you feel like what you are living is not life, but you know what? The promise of life is still there. We as Uti, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. You have lost money. You have lost some, perhaps you, are, you have lost your husband. Maybe you are, you are divorced. Maybe some of you have lost some, some friends, valuable friends in your life. You know what? It doesn't matter. Maybe you have lost your job. But don't give up. This woman lost 
all the money, all what she made. We don't know how old was she, but we know that she spent all the money. She probably sold her house. She probably sold everything, seeking the health, seeking healing. So she lost everything. If, if, even if you have lost everything as a child of God, God is a restorer. We know from Brother Job that when Job lost, uh, he lost his wealth, he lost his material stuff, he lost even his family, but God restored. Job did not give up on God. He was like this woman. He did not give up on God. When his friends came to him and discouraged him, and even his wife who said that uh, if you may just die and forget about this God, but Job did not give up on God. He said, I know my Redeemer lives. He continued to trust God. We are to continue to trust God because our God will come true for us. Let's not give up on God. Don't give up on God. It doesn't matter. Let's not give up on God. He is faithful. Remember, he is a promise keeper. So this woman, she spent all the money, everything. But yet she did not receive the value for all the money she spent. But she kept trusting God. She was not about to give up. Now, Pastor, let's remember that uh, we are, so he is our hope of glory. He is the soon coming king who will come and who will restore us in this lifetime. We will see the restoration in this lifetime because he has promised that we will do better. If we look at the promise that he gave to Abraham, he said, Abraham, I promise that you will be the father of many nations. And Abraham, the man who believed God, he believed that, you know what, I am not going to die until I receive the promise. Abraham proved that God, he is the promise keeper. He was, the Bible tells us that uh, he was old and his wife, they both were in advanced age, but they believed God. They believed that God will keep their promise. So Tito, even the Sanji, he will keep the promise. He will keep the promise. Your loss, Tito will, uh, will, 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 will double your losses. He will double your losses uh, because he is a good God. He is aware of what you have lost. I know some people are saying, you know, I have lost a lot of money. I have done that, but I, have, I haven't seen the value for what I've been doing. Some are, are perhaps saying, I've been serving God, but I don't see no reward in serving God. You know, God is a rewarder. Keep on serving God. Keep on doing it. If you are giving for the good cause to the church, you are giving to the poor, keep on doing it. Because one day we know that God will come true for you and he will reward because he is the rewarder. He, the Bible tells us that he is not the man to lie. So he is, he is our hope of, of glory. So this woman, the Bible tells us that uh, if we read from verse 44, verse 44, uh, if we look at verse 44, she probably heard that Jesus was coming to her city and uh, people perhaps were talking and she said, you know what? I'm not giving up. Think about it. Other people could have given up already and said, I have tried that person. I've tried that doctor. I've, I went there. I did not get help. Why will I try again? Remember, um, she was in a very bad position. And uh, if we look at, at this scripture, uh, verse 44, it tells us that she came true to the crowd. She was not supposed to go. As, as, as I've told you before, that uh, if you had the, 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 the blood issue as the woman, you were not supposed to be close to people you were uh, you were you, you were uh, uh, a, a, an unclean person according to them. So you did not have a right to be among the people. But this woman should risk her life and say, you know what? I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to go and touch. She perhaps she heard about Jesus that Jesus has been healing people all over, and she said, I'm going to try again. Jesus was her hope, and she went and touched the hem of the garment of Jesus. And she received the healing. I want you to, uh, I wonder, as we look at the scripture, it says that she came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. You know why did her flow, the blood flow stopped? Because she believed that if I do, let's remember that uh, uh, if you ought to do something, if you're doing something, you ought to believe. If you trust in God for something, you ought to believe. If you want the healing, you believe that if I go, I will be healed. If we read from Matthew chapter 9, I want you to go to Matthew chapter 9, verse 21. For she said to herself, she told herself, 
she told herself, if only I may touch his garment, only if I may touch. So this woman believed. When she went to Christ, she didn't go there to try. Let's remember, Pastor Randy, uh, we don't try, yes. He is faithful. He is, he is with a track record, a, a good. All of us, even you, you might be complaining today, but yes, okay, I'm here. There are things that we yes, have to and people in also as you. That's why we always say, let's go back and count our blessings. Let's go back and count our blessings. God has been good. If you are going through some difficult time today, that's why we believe that the better days are still ahead of us, irrespective of what is happening, irrespective of us losing. Some are also thinking that we may perhaps be losing this year and uh, we'll, we'll, this year won't be productive as the previous years. But you know what? We know that God is a restorer. He will restore. We will have better days ahead of us. We still have those better days. So Matthew chapter 9, I mean, uh, Matthew chapter 9, 21, it says, for she said to herself, she told herself, she convinced herself. She was so convinced. You know, can we be convinced as a children of God when we go to him? Because the Bible tells us, if we read from the book of Hebrews uh, chapter 11, that he that comes to him must believe. So she did exactly that. She believed that if I go and touch him, I will be healed. So he who comes to him must believe that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So because you will receive nothing. If we read from the book of the first chapter of James, it says that uh, he that doubt will receive nothing from him. is like we don't know whether you come or you're going. So don't be like the waves of the sea that goes and come. Tell yourself that I believe him. I believe that he is the reward of those who diligently seek him. So this woman, she believed that if I go and touch the hem of his garment, I shall be well. I shall be made well. You know, there were a lot of people around Jesus. If you uh, look at the story, a lot of them, I believe that all those people, the crowd that was following Jesus at that time, they also had trouble. You know, it's so sad that there are many people who are around Jesus and who are, because we believe that Jesus is in amidst as a church, he is in Amis. It says that if two or three gather in the Amis, there are a lot of people when Jesus is in, in, in Amis, they don't believe. They're just coming for entertainment. You know, a lot of those people who were going there, they were come, they were, some were going for entertainment. Not that they did not have trouble. Not that they did not seek something from Jesus. But they did not believe. They were just following. And But this woman came and said, you know what? I have a purpose, and my purpose is if I go and touch Jesus, I'll be healed. She went there having this single thing in her mind that I want to be healed. This thing must pass. It cannot continue. We know that there were people who were following Jesus who were also sick, people who also had some troubles, but they did not go to him believing that he will reward him. They were going there, busy, 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 busy spectators. Some were going there to be entertained. Do not come to Jesus. To, we are so as I was entertained. Like he is coming that we may have life. And that we may have that life more abundantly. When he came to this world, he said, I am coming here that I may save not only from your sins. And the Bible puts it clear that the one who calls upon his name will be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Those people who were around Jesus, they did not call upon his name. But this woman who did not give up on her healing, she called upon the name of Jesus and she was healed. That's why we as a children of God, let's be here, let's be like here, and be convinced about his promises, that he is a promise keeper. You might have given up on Jesus, you might have given up on hope, you might have given up some on finishing that uh, certificate or that degree. Continue with that business that you are doing. Continue to do what you are doing because, you know, along the way we fail sometimes. But if we continue to do what you are doing and still believe in him, he will come true for us. Let's remember... And he knew. I know sometimes we look at our pain and say, I'm going through this pain. He knows. 
He is there. Oh, Jesus was there when David was running away from Saul and he was in trouble and uh, he nearly lost his life. He was always there all the time. Because, you know, let's understand one thing about Uyes. He's there when we're in trouble. He's there when things are not going well. He's there when we're in the valley. He's there when we're on the mountaintop. He's there when we're celebrating. He's there when we're going through the sorrow. He's there when we're sick. He's there all the time. He will never leave us, nor forsake us. That's why through his Holy Spirit, he lives in the inside of us. He is aware of what is going, what we're going through. He is aware of what is happening in our lives. He was aware of what is happening with this woman. And he opened a window and passed through that street. And that woman took the opportunity. Let's understand about God. But Israel will always bring about the opportunities. We may fail. Let's look at the lives, at the life of Israel. When God told them, here's an opportunity to cross over Jordan in the book of Numbers 13. And they missed that opportunity. We also miss opportunity. You might have missed lots of opportunities. This woman, she did not miss this one opportunity. But what we know about God is that I know some people will say, oh, baby, Uyesu will come true again. But don't miss that opportunity. Uyesu will always give us more chances, more chances, more chances. He will always come and say, I'm going to give her this chance and this chance. And this chance, and the Israelites had believed that if they missed crossing over in, uh, in the book of uh, Joshua chapter one, he was going to give them another opportunity. He is God of many chances. He is God of many chances. He will give you another chance. He will give you another opportunity. So this woman, she did not give up this one opportunity. She went and touched the hem of of, her, of his garment, and she believed, and she was healed. So let's believe our God because he's a faithful God. You know how we access God? We access God through belief. Don't give up on believing him even if nothing happens today. Continue to believe him every day. Every day wake up and boost your faith. Read about uh, the people who believed God. Read about the heroes of faith. Listen to people who continue to believe God. Don't go around and listen to people who have given up. I believe this woman, uh, in her case, she was blessed not I mean, to be isolated because she could only listen to herself and listen to God. She approached Jesus and she was healed. I want us to go to the book of Matthew again, chapter 9, written from verse 22, just to continue. Verse 21, it says that she said, if I may just go and touch him, I will be healed. Wake up every day and say, you know, Lord, I'm reaching out to you. I know you have good things for me. I know you have life for me, and I want that life, and I'm going to continue to believe you. I'll be, I, I, I want to be like Abraham, who continued to believe in advanced age that God will keep his promise, and God kept the promise. If I read verse 22, it says, but Jesus turned around. He turned around. You know, uh, let's listen. Uh, Jesus felt that there's somebody who touched him differently. There's somebody in the crowd who believed him. You know, when we read from, I think it's the book of Samuel, where the Bible said the Lord, the eyes of the Lord are to and are from to and from the world and looking to those who whose hearts are loyal to him. Who is ready? Who is ready? Be ready. Build your faith so that you're ready. When the opportunity comes, you will be healed. Remember the guy who was at the at, at uh at the pool waiting to be healed it was an opportunity if you take that opportunity if you are ready the readiness that we we we, we need as a children of god is believing waking up every day and believing because when you believe utiko will always come true so um this woman she believed that i will be healed i will not die with this condition now if we read jesus said be of a good tree daughter she looked at this lady. He looked at this lady and said, be, be of a good tree, lady. And let's read further. Your faith has made you well. That's very important. He said, your faith, that's why we will never, we can never afford to lose our faith because we can't lose our faith. 
ukholako lo luza uvusa i business yakho ukholako lo luza phindi lokufuna usomsebenzi uba uluza umsebenzi ukholako lo luza phindi luza sizwe izinhlebumini bakho i'm repeating this scripture it says your faith has made you well ayikwini into lokholo ukholiwe then your faith is rewarded remember those who come to him must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him that this woman she was strong and courageous and if we read it says and the woman was made well from that hour because of her faith she took risk she believed she did not give up on god and she was rewarded remember we are saved because of our faith our faith is important you can never be a cry a christian as a, 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 a as a human being without believing what makes us christians is believing that's why we are called believers sin ama kholwa because si kholela biyesu because si kholela ba he will come true and the ukholo baza ngi sineta ku imeko ezinzima ukholo ewe ku meko xa si ku meko ezinhle lobalekile but ku meko ezinzima that's when we need that faith that's when we need to believe him so this woman was saved by her faith by her believing that one day i will be made one she was strong and courageous she did not give up Remember when God uh, spoke to Joshua and Caleb and Joshua he said be strong and courageous we need to be strong and courageous all the time that's what this woman possessed she had she was strong Th- those are the virtues that she had she was strong and courageous she was relentless she she was not about to give up she continued to do the right thing knowing that she will be here to anti so she was strong and courageous she was determined that i don't come to die in this situation let's understand one thing about jesus was and we assume in the midst of our trouble he gives us peace sibanon qolo she had peace knowing that i'm going to get healed she had peace knowing that my life will change again i want us to read from the book of john chapter 14 reading from verse 27 this is the time again if you look at this at this a uh, scripture this is a time when there was such anxiety they had such anxiety such uncertainty as uh, as, as we we'll see uh, in this world today uh, the disciples were about to lose jesus jesus was about to be crucified he was about to live and the time was just not good because they enjoyed him they loved him for three years he taught them for three years he loved them for three years he trained them But now Jesus he was about to leave he's saying to them we for read verse 27 he say peace i live with you peace i live with you he say i'm not leaving you without peace i'm gonna leave you with peace and my peace i give you not as the world gives so we as a children of god that's why we when we're in trouble we go to him because we want his peace to keep our hearts so that in case you say to zinga be called troubled ube ne stress ube ne worry about things uqolo ngathi xoma is the peace that we need to keep our heart you know ube no qolo when things are not okay when not qolo retrench you and say the same people wouldn't understand why you keep smiling but because you know that our god is a promise keeper and the better days are ahead what gives us that peace is that the better days are ahead that's why jesus is say i leave you with my peace because i know that the better your better days are ahead ubombe la kuphil apha kuba ndihamba ubombe ni kuzaqhubeka and you will make something out of your life your life will change people around you so uyesu uthi uh, to these people peace i live with you my peace i give to you not as the world gives do i give you to you let not your heart be troubled uthiqwa kafuntu bazalele that's why in the book of philippians is saying be anxious for nothing be anxious for nothing you know the problem with the anxiety is that uh, when you have anxiety when you are unenhluzi yebhlungu and you are troubled you uyoyika then you cannot at the same time have faith faith overcomes the trouble uqa sikholwa if ukholwe to lususa konke ukoyika ukholwe to lususa konke i anxiety in our hearts because we believe and we have hope ukholwe lusinika ela themba uba izinto zizakuchinja na uyesu uthi apha let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid let not don't allow 
yourself to have anxiety, to be depressed. Don't allow yourself to be afraid. Don't allow yourself to have that fear because Tito has negated that spirit of fear. He has given us the spirit of uh, of, of love and he has given us the spirit of sound mind. He has given us the spirit of knowing that you will overcome. So he's saying, my peace, I live with you. He's putting our heart at ease, understanding that he will come true for us. I know that there's lots of anxieties if we look at, um, at the things that are happening around you and the things that are happening around us, but we trust in God because we know that the better days are ahead of us. In Zuko, as Nandi, Zieza. Now, if we read, uh, we go to uh, uh, John chapter 16, reading from verse 32. This is our scripture as we are closing. He says, these things I've spoken to you that in me, kuye, kuye, not within, not in your material things. You call it was around and the PCA to I cook material things. The PCA to I cook was many things. We call it to aluko because Unemali. Our peace is in Him. We may have nothing and still have peace in Him. We call it to aluko because we see everything going well in in our lives. Our peace is in Him. He's saying these things I've spoken to you. He was encouraging them just before the crucifixion. He was telling them that don't worry about that. Don't worry, don't worry about losing me. You are not actually losing me because I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit who will live in the inside of you. And he's saying that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation. Tribulation is a Classical I tetuba we will not be troubled. Classical I tetuba as a zukula. Classical I tetuba as a zuluza is in that. Classical I tetuba is with us as a But what you know is that we as uti, I have overcome the world. That means we are, we will have to do the same. The troubles will come. Isn't those that when they but we will have to overcome. Isn't it for Zuzauza? Isn't those that when they will be But one hope that we have is that we will overcome. Romans chapter 8, it says that we are more than conquerors in all these things. All, I don't care, whatever you're going through, whatever things that are, are blocking you, whatever things that are obstructing uh, your future, but we know one thing that in all these things we will overcome. In all these things we will overcome. That's why we run to him because he is the one who gives us future. He is the one who will make sure that things will go well for us. Yes, you as a child of God, that's why today I will encourage you that you continue to trust God. That you be like the woman who had the blood issue who said, I'm not giving up. I'm not about to give up. You know, I told myself as a child of God that I will never give up. I'm not giving up on God. I know that some of them will look at themselves and say, you know, uh, I've been trying this. It's not coming together. We Abraham had the same problem and the promise was still there. You know what? He continued to trust God because God came true for him. I know that maybe some of your colleagues, uh, other people, are doing better than you. But you know what? If you're a child of God, you will do better as well. Don't look at them. Let's look at, at Christ who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Let's continue to trust him. 12 years, this woman, she was struggling, but she did not give up on God. Please, do not give up. Doesn't matter how many years, do not give up on him. He will come true. Because in the middle of the year, we will see his glory. We will see his glory, and when we see his glory, people will glorify God because of you standing and standing, believing in him. Let's keep on standing. The Bible puts it clear for it from the book of Ephesians. It says that having done all to stand, stand therefore. You've done everything. This woman, uh, she probably did everything. The Bible tells us that she tried everything. Went to that and that and that, tried that and that and that. And to she went and she did not get no value. You probably did not get value as well for many years trying that and that. But let me remind you that your, whatever you were trying is not in vain. Your efforts will never be in vain. Uchiko will reward you. He will reward your efforts. I'm going to pray for you as we are closing. I'm praying, first of all, for those who have lost hope. I'm, I'm praying for you because without hope, you will not be able to live. 
have that hope, go back and read the Bible. Go back and begin to speak with, what, with God. Don't give up on God. I'm going to pray for you that God will restore that hope. God will restore that faith because your faith will save you. Nothing else. Nobody will save you. I don't care. You go to whatever prophet, they will not save you. What will save you is your faith. You must believe because the Bible tells us that if you believe that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him, then you are fine. You need your faith to be restored. So I'm going to pray for you as we close. And Father, we pray for those who have lost their faith. Those, Father God, who probably like this woman, who lost everything, lost everything. They've done all they could do. They stood and stood. Now they're about to give up. We pray, Lord, that you will restore their faith, that they will not give up, Father God. We, we pray that faith will rise. We pray that, Lord God Almighty, that, Lord, you will restore their hope. In Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to pray for you if you want to receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior. Let's remember that uh, it's all about Jesus. We have to come to him first. We have to uh, allow him to come into our lives. Allow him to forgive our sins. Then we will have the relationship. All of this starts with the relationship with God. I want to pray for those who want to, who want to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If you are here, maybe you are watching us. It's the first time, or you've been doing it, but you were no more serving God. You gave up on hope. Please pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive my sins. Wash me in your blood. Remove all my iniquities. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you next Sunday. Remember, do not give up on hope. Your faith will save you. Nothing else. Your faith will save you in Jesus' mighty name.